It's CES season, so the news are a plenty. I'll try my best to cover as much as I can by strategically splitting all of these subjects in such a way that you get as much info as possible. What's up, guys? I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with NVIDIA. First things first, the 2060 is out and we were pretty much right on every single point. The price, and it's the best value for an RTX card, but it's still pretty expensive all things considered. For the specs, we go bam, bam, and bam. Same as we thought. Performance wise, we got bam, bam, and bam. Check out the Hardware Canucks review linked down below, but it performs about as well as a GTX 1070 Ti. Also with Nvidia, they announced some games that will support ray tracing and DLSS. Here's the list, you can pause if you want to read the list, or link will be down in the description of course. Lastly, Nvidia opened support for adaptive sync for their GPUs. That means that you could potentially enjoy free sync on your Nvidia card. Now I say potentially because Nvidia says that they're testing monitors out to validate them for this specific purpose. You could technically use a G-Sync GPU on an adaptive sync monitor, but they say that it might not work. Now, what I think is really happening is that Nvidia is trying to save face and that all FreeSync monitors are actually compatible. When they say that they are validating monitors, it just means that, for example, a monitor with a relatively small range of 45 to 75 hertz doesn't pass the G-Sync status, so they don't validate it. But it still works and you can still activate it in their control panel. The support for G-Sync on FreeSync monitors will pop up on the 15th of January. What do you guys think about that? Let me know down below. Now with AMD, we just got our first look at Ryzen 3000 Mobile, and this, while this is a little bit weird, the mobile version of the chip won't be using Zen 2 like the desktop version. It will be stuck at Zen Plus. We get many processors in that family ranging from a 2-core 4-thread Ryzen 3 with Vega 3 graphics, all the way up to a Ryzen 7 4-core 8-threads with a Vega 10 IGP. My thoughts? Nah, I don't buy laptops, but if you're in the market for one, AMD will likely be the budget option. With Zen Plus, you'll probably still get better bang for your buck compared to an Intel equipped device. Still with AMD, it looks like they will enter the market of Chromebooks for the first time. What is disappointing about this move is that the APUs that were showcased are from the excavator architecture. Yikes! I guess it's a good thing to have more choice, but the Excavator series is from 2015, and if I'm not mistaken, is based on the 2011 bulldozer architecture. Correct me if I'm wrong. Moving on to streaming peripherals, Elgato actually brings us new devices and apps that are pretty cool and useful. First is ScreenLink, an app that captures and streams your screen, apps, and camera directly to your PC so you can use, for example, your phone as a webcam if you want. A lot of utilities already do that, although it's often polluted with watermarks or just bad in general. They also introduced the Elgato Keylight, which is a studio LED panel for streaming and content creators that has adjustable color temperature, goes pretty bright, and is app enabled. Other than those things, we got some updates for other current Elgato products. And then we have ASUS. They have two really weird computers to show during CES. The first is the Mothership, a sort of upside down laptop that won't really go on your lap. It looks pretty cool, but I don't know if I would want it as a desktop replacement since it's pretty much always going to be on your desk and you probably won't be moving it that much. At least it's mobile to a degree, so there's that. The second one is the ZenBook. What's so special about it? Well, it has a reversed notch. That's right, to get the bezel as thin as possible, the ZenBook will have a bump out on top of the screen for the webcam. I guess that's innovative. Lastly, Razer is getting into the gaming monitor game with its Raptor 27 inch display. It looks incredibly sexy from the front and the back. It's 1440p, has an IPS panel at one millisecond, that's pretty impressive, 144 hertz of course, and has this weird but awesome looking hub pass-through system at the back. It supports FreeSync, HDR400, and possibly G-Sync according to Razer, and of course has an RGB base. How much are we expecting to pay for this beauty? 700 bucks. Yep, 
that's expensive. I like it, but yeah, not going to pay that much for a monitor. Anyways, guys, that is pretty much it for today's video. Stay tuned since CES is far from over and we have a lot to cover on the next few days. Hopefully my lighting has been fixed since the past few videos. You can click right here to see the latest video, right here to subscribe to the channel. It would be greatly appreciated. Don't forget to drop me a like down below. Stay frosty and I'll see you guys on the next one. Damn, I talked quite quickly on this video. I'm, I don't know, I'm kind of uh, excited about CES. All right, see you guys. Stay frosty. Why do...